The financial sector outperforming the S&P 500 today following Fed Chair Powell's comments signaling rate cuts are in sight. Joining us now, B of A Securities Senior U.S. Banks Analyst, Ebrahim Punawala. Ebrahim, uh, it's great to have you on. I mean, it's fun to think back to when we were on the cusp of the initial Fed rate hikes and how that might be bullish for banks because of what it might mean for net interest margin. Now we're celebrating uh, the potential for rate cuts for, I guess, what it means uh, for the state of the current economy uh, and credit conditions. But why don't you boil down why uh, it should be a positive if you think it is? Mike, thanks for having me. So it's interesting, right? Like if you take a flashback in time, we spent a decade post the financial crisis waiting for higher rates. We finally got higher rates and now We've been waiting for uh, some relief on rates. And I think it's worth putting in context what we had with the rate cycle with the Fed from 22 onwards was not a rate cycle. It was a 500 basis point rate shock, which really jolted the system. And then you had the SVB crisis on the back of it where concerns around funding costs, deposits really picked up. And the, 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 the risk with the 500 basis points in less than 15 months was you started worrying about repricing risk, uh, commercial real estate, all of that. So what you're seeing today is, and uh, we, we can talk a little bit more about the conversation you were having with Jim Paulson. I think what you're seeing today is, once again, the mar mar market pricing in a soft landing. And I think if we do get a soft landing, net-net, that should be positive for the banking industry. And where within the banking industry, um, I mean, if you looked at some, I guess, outside the very largest banks, there's been this overhang or perception of exposure to commercial real estate. I mean, if I look at the publicly traded commercial real estate plays, they've obviously been recovering very strongly right here. Does it seem as if the market is suggesting that they will have sidestepped the worst damage there? How would you play it as an investor? So you're right. I think what you've seen in the last six months also is the big banks have sort of broken away. You have the likes of J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs trading at all-time highs. It's the regional banks that have seen pressure on funding costs, if you go down the market cap spectrum, and the commercial real estate risk, which, and we've been very consistent on this, ex-office commercial real estate has been a bit overblown. But I think what you're seeing is the five-year yield, which underpins a lot of commercial real estate loans, is at about 3.6% at last check. It was close to 5% in October of 2023. So the relief that you're seeing, not only from the Fed cutting interest rates potentially uh, starting September, but the yield curve resetting relative to where we were six to nine months ago, just makes it a lot more easier for some of these landlords to afford uh, re refinancing when they come up over the next year or two. Yeah, that does make sense. And it's a good reminder that a lot of the economy is really based on Fed influence rates in one way or another. You mentioned J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Uh, what do we think this might mean for capital markets activity, M&A, the trading business, IPOs? I mean, they've more or less been pretty dormant uh, to date. So we've been pretty bullish about just the momentum that you've seen in investment banking this year. Goldman Sachs is the name that's a top pick uh, on, on BFA's top ideas list for the year. And I do think the one of the outcomes of lower rates, obviously the market's waiting for elections. I'm sure you guys are waiting for uh, NVIDIA's results next week. But generally, if we get lower rates, we get some sort of a policy clarity coming out of November. I think that sets up for really strong rebound continuing in capital markets. And you're right, debt, debt issuance has picked up. What we are yet to see is a, a greater pickup in m a activity, which I think will happen, and IPOs. I think you've seen one-off IPOs, but I think if the market overall uh, hold up over the coming months, I think all of that sets up extremely well for the largest banks in terms of capturing that rebound. Is there a part of the sector that, that you might avoid or be more uh, skeptical of at this point? I just wonder if where we are in terms of things like exposure to, you know, you know consumer credit or, or other areas that seem as if they've softened up even going into Fed rate cuts. So I, I think as, as you look at the most of the large cap banks in the United States, they are indexed to the mid to higher segment of the consumer. So even when we've seen the softness, a lot of banks like talking about the excess deposits have come down. But generally, to me, if employment holds up, and I don't know if that means 150,000 jobs a month, something in that ballpark, historically, credit costs for the banking industry correlate highly with what happens with the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. So if the unemployment rate is not spiking on us, people have their jobs, they're going to service their credit card, auto debt, 
And I think that's what we are seeing, I think, from a cards analyst recently talking about a little bit of a plateauing on delinquencies on the, on the consumer card side as well. 